Good day, everybody. Pastor Kevin here bringing you today's Matthew devotional. Um, We are in, um, still in chapter one, but we're going to talk a little bit about the birth story for the next uh, few devotions. Um, I'm going to read that birth story. You may read it again, but I want to just kind of go through that so we're in the text and we understand what's going on here. This is in Matthew chapter one, uh, and this is verse 18, starting with verse 18. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother, Mary, had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit." She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Okay. There's plenty of things we could try to pick out in here, and I'm only going to have the opportunity to pick out a few. Uh, And I think probably the first one that's most important is you'll you'll notice that, um, and this this actually carries over a little bit, um, the idea of where is this child coming from, right? And you'll see in here twice it says, from the Holy Spirit. Right? There, there's this idea, she was found to be a child by the, from the Holy Spirit, and then and as Joseph is having this dream, angel of the Lord appears and says, this is, this is the deal, it's from the Holy Spirit. Um, <laughs> um, for many of us, I would argue, um, there are, we have a, a triune God, but oftentimes one of the Trinity gets kicked to the curb a bit. And I, I'd argue in a lot of ways that's the Holy Spirit. Now, I know that there are some of us that may come from more of a charismatic background and some of us who do not. And I'm not trying to talk to either of those groups. Um, In fact, I would argue um, maybe all of us should come more to the center because we are truly infused and, and not infused. Let's not use that word because it's loaded. You guys may not know that. Um, We are... We, basically, the Holy Spirit has been granted to us as kind of the, the one who's with us all the time, the one who's speaking to us, telling us uh, what is basically witnessing to Jesus. Whenever we're doing something wrong or whatever, there's a witnessing to remember, remember the king who came, right? Lived, died, resurrected. And the Spirit's reminding us of those things. It's like the Spirit is the constant gospel voice in our lives reminding us. And when we read scripture, we're, the, the best way is with the help of, of the one who is actually giving us that gospel voice, right? We can read this. There are people, there are scholars who know this inside and out, but I would say that many of them don't know Jesus. There are a bunch that just don't. They just, this became their, their vocation. Well, I'm just going to, I'm going to learn Hebrew and other languages, you know, that are ancient and, and Greek and, um, and I'm going to make a livelihood that way. That does, I mean, it's wonderful. They know their Bible inside and out, but it does not mean that they know Jesus. And it's the Spirit who would actually tell us that. Now, what I want you to do is think about the fact that that same Spirit that says, this child was from the Holy Spirit. This is Jesus we're talking about. The Holy Spirit is that involved in that moment. And I think it's a good opportunity, and some of you may have read this in the curriculum. It's a good opportunity to go back and read Genesis 1, um, 1 and 2. I think that's it. One and two would do it. And see that the, the Spirit is very involved um, in the, the Trinitarian action, in the Trinitarian stuff. Uh, and I think oftentimes we, we love Jesus. Sometimes we may not know what to do with the Father because maybe you had a bad father or something like that. Um, but the Spirit kind of gets slid into this kind of dark corner somewhere. And I'm hoping that you don't do that. Um, I would argue it's that spirit who convicts us. It's that spirit who enabled us to come to Jesus in the first place. 
It is that spirit who gives us the power to live this life, to be conformed into the image of the son. That is that spirit who does that. Um, I'm not suggesting you need to do anything that you might consider weird or unusual or crazy. I'm simply saying, recognize that you are empowered by the same spirit who was involved at this moment, a seminal moment. And you'll, you're gonna see more. Matthew's gonna show us more. But the spirit is, is here and involved, hands dirty in the middle of this, um, for all intents and purposes, recreation story. Right? We talked about the, the first couple of words of Matthew's gospel in Greek, including the word that could be uh, considered Genesis. Well, the Holy Spirit is right here in the middle of it. And that very same spirit is right here in the middle of us, in our presence, enabling us to act and to choose correctly, to be righteous, to be just, to be holy, um, to be gracious, to be hospitable, all of those things, all of the gifts that you have, all the gifts you can think of, those are enabled and empowered through the Holy Spirit. Uh, and that's worth considering. You don't, I, I'm not suggesting that you need to see the Holy Spirit as, as someone that you need to pray to, for example, or anything like that. I'm, I'm just simply saying, acknowledge the fact that you have the very, the spirit of the living God with you and that that can be so empowering uh, because those moments where you feel like you can't do it, you're right. You're absolutely right. Because oftentimes we do pull us, ourselves up at the bootstraps and just get something done. Well, maybe you can get it done, but you have to think, well, was that the right way to do it? And I think oftentimes it's the very spirit of the living God who tells us, no, I'm with you. I can help you. I can help you do this right. I can help you choose not to do this, but to do that. That makes sense? So I hope that you would know that. I hope you'd lean into that. Um, again, you don't need to be telling the person next to you on the plane that, hey, you know, I got the Holy Spirit right here with me. <laughs> you can if you want, you really can. But I'm just suggesting that our understanding of the triune God and how they fit together and how they're involved in our lives and how they've been involved in history is super, super important. The God of the universe, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is hands dirty in the middle of this uh, redemption project that you and I are the beneficiaries of, okay? So carry that with you. Maybe it will help you think about how you work through your day today. That, that would be good. That would be a good start, okay? Father God, thank you so much for the people that are joining today. I pray that they would know that you go with them and that the method that you go with them in is with your spirit. Your spirit is actually with them when they read their Bibles, when they pray, when they're, when they're doing things wrong. That your spirit goes with them and is reminding them, no, this is not what I had planned for you. Um, so help us. Help us to hear that voice. Help us to be um, submissive to that voice. Help us to react and not just try to put it away and, and, um, and not listen. Uh, most specifically in scripture, help us to pay attention to what you're saying to us. Help us pay attention to the story and seeing how we fit into it now. What are the practical ways that we can live out this faith now when it's so different than the time that was when all of this occurred? Um, let us listen to your spirit because your spirit knows. Your spirit has access to... It, the very your, your spirit has the very wisdom of the entirety of the Godhead, and thus so do we. We've got access to the same. Help us to lean into that and ask for your wisdom. Ask for your input. Um, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, till next time.